द साइट ऑफ फर्टिलाइजेशन इन ह्यूमन इज अम्पुलरी इस्थमिक जंक्शन वट इज द साइट ऑफ फर्टिलाइजेशन साइट ऑफ फर्टिलाइजेशन इन ह्यूमन बींग्स इन ह्यूमन इज अम्पुलरी इस्थमिक जंक्शन द जंक्शन इन बिटवीन द अम्पुला एंड इस्थमस ऑफ फेलोपियन ट्यूब फेलोपियन ट्यूब वॉट आर द डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द फेलोपियन ट्यूब दट जस्ट लेट एस हैव a simple diagram of the the uterus This is the cervix. This is the uterine body. This is fundus. These are the uterine tubes. Just you see, which part is called? If here are the ovary if here are the ovary how the this is the uterine part isthmus here is the near the ovary the dilated part of the dilated part of the uterine tube dilated part of the uterine tube and this is uterine part this is isthmus this is ampulla this is infundibulum the void distal wider part of the infundibulum funnel set these are the fimbriae okay this is vagina now let 
us discuss the events. Let us start the events. But where the fertilization occurs? Here. When the egg is released during the ovulation, when the egg is released from the ovary, one of the ovary, the ovum is, as we know, ovum is surrounded by zona pellucida and the corona radiata. So let us discuss the arrival of the gametes. Arrival of spermatozoa or sperms. Okay. How the sperms are arriving to the fertilization site? Actually, the sperms are deposited in the vagina. This is vagina. Vaginal canal. This is the vagina. The sperms are deposited in the vagina of the female genital tract by the process of insemination. The deposition of the sperms means semen containing the sperms in the vagina by the copulatory organ penis is called insemination. Sperms are deposited here but they have to travel the cervix. The uterine cavity means uterus. They have to pass through the uterus. Then the part of the different parts of the fallopian tube that is uterine part is the must. Then it has to reach here. So it, the sperms is to sperms. They have to travel a lot. Travel the long path to reach the fertilization site. After insemination, the ejaculated sperms, they enter into the cervix. The path of the sperm, you can, the path of the sperm. Path of sperms. After ejaculation from vagina to cervix, then from cervix to Uterine cavity, uterine cavity, then they have to enter into the fallopian tube. That is uterine part of the fallopian tube or uterine tube, uterine part. What is that uterine part which is passing through the wall of the uterus? The fallopian tube or the uterine tube which is passing through the wall of the uterus is called uterine part. Then into the isthmus, then into the isthmus. Then it is reaching to the fertilization site where the ovum is present. Where the ovum is present. Where it is present? Here in the ampulohistomic junction, the ovum is present being surrounded by its two egg membrane, zona pellucida, zona pellucida and the corona radiata made up of modified granulosa cells, elongated, modified, elongated granulosa cells. The sperm has to reach here. This is the part. Then, when, if during the ovulation, that means, before, two days before the ovulation or one day after the ovulation, because sperms, just after ejaculation, the sperms can survive for 48 hours. So, when they reach here, if the ovum is there or if ovulation of the secondary oocyte is anticipated, then only the fertilization can take place. Because we, we have discussed
just before in the previous session we have discussed all copulations do not lead to fertilization because the sperm and egg the secondary oocyte they have to be transported to the fertilization site simultaneously then only fertilization is possible then this uh, think about it, it is is the must to fertilization site that is ampullary isthmic junction then come to the arrival of of secondary oocyte the secondary oocyte is released from the ruptured over matured ruptured ovarian follicle or ruptured graafian follicle at lh source from one of the ovaries and it is received by the nearby fallopian tube as we have discussed the distal wider funnel shaped part of the in uh, the part of the fallopian tube is called infundibulum that is present near the ovary so it receives the infundibulum receives the secondary oocyte during the ovulation the fimbriae they help in pushing the secondary oocyte along with its uh, surrounding corona radiata cells into the infundibulum it enters into the infundibulum through the uh, ostium there here is a opening called ostium here are the fimbriae so as the okay as the second oocyte the egg ovum is not motile is sessile in nature that's why its movement is drawn by the fimbriae movement of the fimbriae and the cilia present within the or uh, the cilia present inside the fallopian tube or uterine tube uterine tube is lined by ciliated epithelium they help in moving the oocyte secondary oocyte and other cells surrounding it so it is drawn at ovulation arrival of the sperm when it occurs to the fertilization site at lh source when the maximum lh is secreted the ovum is released the secondary oocyte the oocyte is released from the ruptured graafian follicle the mature ovarian follicle is known as graafian follicle named after the scientist ruptured graafian follicle and and moved to fertilization site fertilization site by the help of by the help of fimbriae fimbriae and cilia cilia of uterine tube now let us write down the path of the ova the secondary oocyte when the secondary oocyte is released from the ovary then it is received by the infundibulum so we can write down from ovary to the infundibulum then it reaches the fertilization site reaches the fertilization site passing through the ampulla is the girls never like to move along 
here the secondary oocyte along with its parent cells only passes a short distance moves a short distance that is from ovary to the population site where is the sperms move a long distance they have traveled from the, through the male genital tract and deposited here in the vagina vaginal canal then they have to move through the cervix uterine cavity then enter into the they enter into the fallopian tube or uterine tube that is the uterine part isthmus then they have they have to reach the ampullary isthmic junction where the oocyte secondary oocyte is awaiting for the sperm so during insemination about how many sperms are deposited suppose 200 to 300 million of sperms are deposited actually it is uh, it is a range in different uh, from person to person about uh, 20 million to 300 million so when in average let us take the 200 million of sperms are deposited here then while traveling through the cervix uterine cavity how much they are reaching to the oocyte to see while passing through cervix some are embedded in the cervical fold and there they die even passing through uterine cavity many are trapped by mucosa lining that is endometrium in the folding sub endometrium they are also dead while passing through the uterine cavity they are trapped by the mucosa lining that is the endometrium and there they die some they travel to the fallopian tube which side the oocyte is not present and some reach move towards the appropriate the particular fallopian tube where the ovum is present however how many are reaching to about 100 to 200 sperms they reach out of 200 million sperms only about 200 sperms reach the ovum and the all these sperm those who are found surrounding the oocyte are not capable to fertilize the oocyte while passing through uterine tube they are being capacitated one thing to know the sperm the sperm particular sperm can fertilize the oocyte that has undergone a particular specific reaction that is one capacitation reaction and acrosomal reaction what we will study in the next session okay